This nominee does have serious problems, John. Uh, she has the least experience of any nominee in 50 years. Uh, she was a Clinton operative for uh, quite a number of years, the point person on efforts to restrict gun rights, the point person on blocking partial birth abortion. At Harvard, she barred the military from the recruiting offices, uh, demeaned them in violation of law, and uh, her legal brief was rejected eight to nothing by the Supreme Court. There are a number of things here that cause us to believe, and any American to be concerned, uh, that she would be an activist judge, someone willing to promote her agenda from the bench and not be objective because her top judicial heroes have all been some of the most active judges in our history. Yeah, and, you know, on, on, on that point, one, one of the so-called activist judges that she has praised is retired Israeli judge Aaron Barak. Many people have pointed to that as a, as a <clears throat> sign that she may be an activist judge herself, but Aaron, Aaron Barak, even though he said he disagreed with him on, on legal and philosophical grounds, also won praise from Antonin Scalia. So can you look at, at her praise of Aaron Barak and say, oh, she's going to be an activist judge when, when conservative judges have praised him as well? Well, she's uh, uh, closest and most admiring of American activist judges, but with regard to that, Justice Scalia and his praising him as a person clearly distinguished mm -hmm. his view of the role of a judge from that of Judge uh, Aaron Barak uh, in Israel. She did not. She called him her hero and she uh, uh, said he was a great, great judge without the qualifications, I think, that clearly should have been made there. Uh, this is a big deal. Uh, he, uh, uh, Judge Povner, said his ideas are just outside yeah. the American tradition of law. Yeah, I, I wanted to also ask you about this idea of legal experience. Five years ago, Senator Sessions, you said this of a Supreme Court nominee, quote, it is not necessary that she have previous experience as a judge in order to serve on the Supreme Court. It's perfectly acceptable to nominate outstanding lawyers to that position. You said that of President Bush's nominee to the Supreme Court, Harriet Myers. We all know what happened to her. But I'm wondering what's different between then and now, other than the fact that this is a Democratic nominee? Well, I was a bit uneasy about Myers, but I, I did support her initially. She had 26 years of law practice, uh, and it worked in the White House a number of years. This, this uh, nominee, has only two or three years of practice, mostly academic and mostly political activities uh, in government. Uh, this is the thinnest resume ever. She right. just hasn't had the depth of it. She's never tried a case, uh, never cross-examined a witness before a jury. Uh, this is a se severely uh, limited uh, level of experience, yeah. I think. You can overcome it, but it's clearly a deficiency. You, you, just a second ago, Senator Sessions, you pointed to Harriet Meyer's White House experience as a qualifying factor, but you point to Elena Kagan's White House experience as a potential disqualifying factor. What's the difference? I think uh, a person who's worked as count in the council's office in the White House does have some appreciation of some of the c different kinds of issues that come before the court. Mm -hmm. But it's not the only thing. Most cases deal with lawsuits in cities and counties all over America, yeah. uh, the kind of uh, things that routine lawyers uh, learn. She had both. She had 26 years of practice. Yeah. And, and, and the experience that Elena Kagan has had as Solicitor General, is, is that enough for you? No, uh, it's only a little bit over a year, 14 months. Uh, she argued in, in one of her cases, and I think wrongly, that the uh, Constitution would allow Congress to ban the publication of pamphlets before an election day. Yeah. She's interviewed again, intervened against Arizona's law that said a business should uh, not hire illegal aliens, uh, just like the federal law does. Yeah. Uh, so I think her positions there are not so sound. And, and one other point, it's well known, of course, many people have talked about this, that uh, she wrote that the confirmation process for a Supreme Court judge is, quote, a vapid and hollow process. Uh, are those words going to come back to haunt her in the next couple of days? Well, you know, it is. Um, sometimes that has been so. I think in the last two nominations, Alito and Roberts, they've uh -huh. been really good exchanges. She was talking about hearings uh, before that. Right. So I think uh, she will uh, feel incumbent upon herself to be more open than a lot of nominees have. I hope we have a very good discussion. She's a, a good, you know, yeah. academic. She should be able mm -hmm. to handle the questions easily. But, but you say, uh, looking at some past hearings, she was actually right? Yeah, it's, uh, she, uh, uh, some of the hearings, judges have virtually said nothing, yeah. uh, and, and they've um, 
I've been too restrained, I believe. 